Amen. You guys ready to worship the Lord this morning? Amen. Why don't we go ahead and stand up? Jesus, we love you this morning. We honor you this morning, Jesus. We give you praise this morning, Lord. Well, I feel the warm wind blowing, melting all the sadness off of my soul, and I smell the sweet cherry blossoms pouring all the gladness into my soul. Springtime, 
gonna come now yeah, yeah. it's coming it's coming now Jesus Jesus
Estrela Seu nome é o Space Between All the things you see In this reckoning
exalt your name. Be 
your head is white as wool and I know that your voice sounds like water Jesus you're beautiful and I know that your eyes are like flames of fire I know that your head is white as wool and I know that your voice sounds like water Jesus you're beautiful
Thank you, Lord, for being with us this morning, Lord. We give you all the praise and the glory, Father. We pray, Lord, that your presence just begin to increase, Father. And, Lord, we just love you, Father. We give you praise and honor in Jesus' name. You may be seated this morning. Good morning, Oasis. We are so glad you could join us this morning. Here are your announcements for the week. first time here, welcome home. Please fill out a visitor card and take it to the Welcome Center after service. We would love to meet you and we have a gift for you. The Journey on Fire Conference is coming up July 30th and the 31st. This is a conference for 18 through 30 year olds. If you would like to get registered for the Journey on Fire Conference, go online to journeyonfireprv.org.
You belong here and we are all truly better together. If you would like to get involved in any of our ministries or behind the scenes, go to the Welcome Center today to get signed up. Here at Oasis, there is more than one way to give. Online, in the buckets, or you can text Oasis and the amount you would like to give to 74483. There is always so much going on at Oasis, so connect with us by liking our page on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, or go online to oasiscarlsbad.com for more information. That's all we have for announcements. Please enjoy the rest of our service. Come on, Oasis, do we have anybody who's glad to be at church this morning? Oh, come on, you can do better now. I said, do we have anybody who's glad to be at church this morning? Come on, somebody. Hey, man, we want to thank you for this week, man. It was a great, great week with Youth Conference 2021. We had over 150 students come to our youth conference this year. Come on, you can give it up for that. Man, it was such an awesome time. And, uh, and that was only a, a taste of how chaotic and crazy it was. Uh, I believe we actually have a, f- a longer recap video coming out later. But, uh, man, hey, it wasn't all just fun and games and, and blending up Happy Mills and making kids drink it. Uh, that I believe the Lord showed up. I believe God did his thing and students' lives were touched. And that's really what it was all about. Amen. Come on. That's really the whole point. Uh, it's really us just casting the nets out and drawing the fish in with the crazy games, but really it was the Holy Spirit that did his thing. And, uh, and it was an awesome, awesome experience. And we want to thank you guys, uh, everyone who supported us and partnered with us to sponsor students and, and just give towards the event. Uh, believe me when I tell you this, uh, every dollar is needed because every dollar is being used to fix something we fixed or broke. Sorry, it's fix something we broke, including the stain. See the red stain right there? Yeah, that was us. Um, sorry, Kim, we love you. And uh, we're working on it though, but thank you again. And can we give it up for our pastors, Gabe and Bethy, for allowing us to use the facility to tear it up and to have a uh, crazy blow up. Uh, what was that thing called? It was from Joe Bruce, the, the crazy dude that does the, the thing. We borrowed that and we had, man, we had, a, we had a fire truck here at one point. Fireworks, man, it was, it was a lot. But, uh, but I believe God did his thing. And uh, we're we're truly honored and blessed that you guys support us that way. And uh, if you want to hook a if you want to hook a brother up uh, by helping us buy some of our canvas merch, we still have some merchandise available. We have T-shirts and a sweatshirt for sale in the lobby. If you want to hit hit it up after service, get you one. Uh, represent canvas in town. Come on, we got the best merch around. And uh, just help us out. All the proceeds go back to help support. Uh, canvas in the conference because how many guys know it costs a lot of money to put on an event like that and a lot of time and effort and energy but once again we want to thank you guys so much Uh, we're still fried all of us are still kind of tired from the event but I believe God did some awesome mighty things hey coming up August uh, 1st at 6 p.m., that's a Sunday, here at the church, um, our Oasis girls are having a graduation. They're having their, their crowning ceremony, and that'll be right here at the church. So if you have uh, a, a young girl that's in Oasis Girls, uh, it'll be then here at the church, and all are welcome to come celebrate them for that. And uh, we, we really believe in our Oasis Girls and our Royal Rangers. They're doing an amazing job on Wednesday nights. And, uh, and I believe at, at most nights, they have 80 to 90 kids in there, and uh, that's it's crazy. So if, again, if you're, if you're involved in that, you want to be here for that, that's August 1st at 6 p.m. here at the church. Cool? Sound like a plan? Alrighty. Hey, if you want to catch up on all of Oasis news and everything that's going on here at the church, follow us on our social media platforms or on our website, oasiscarlsbad.com, and you can stay informed on everything that's going on here at the church. All right? Hey, we're going to give our tithes and offerings this morning, so if you can get your hearts ready for that and your, your offering ready for that, amen. That's what's up. God loves a joyful giver, and we got a joyful giver here in the house today. We love you. Thank you so much. And uh, we're going to pray this prayer. And if you guys will repeat this with me and then we'll give. Uh, and we, let's read this together. As we receive today's offering, we are believing you for heaven open, earth invaded, storehouses unlocked, and miracles created. Dreams and visions, angelic visitations, anointing, giftings, and calls, jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, positions and promotions, provisions and resources to go to the nations 
sons, souls, and more souls from every generation, saved and set free, carrying kingdom revelation. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs, that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. And everyone said, hallelujah. God bless you as you give. There's three ways to give. Oasis, you can give online, you can give in the bucket, or you can text to give. God bless you as you give this morning, Oasis. Hey, we're going to get two minutes to go around, shake hands, say hi to your neighbor, tell them you're glad to see them in the house of God this morning. You got two minutes, stand to your feet, go say what's up, wake up a little bit, come on. Somebody get excited to be in the house of God this morning. Act like you're happy if you're not, pretend to be. Come on, somebody. Let's cheer up this morning. Let's add some energy in the room. We got two minutes, two minutes to say hi to your neighbor. for the love and the hugs today. So grateful that everyone is here today, 1115. How many enjoyed that storm if you heard it? How many enjoyed waking up to some rain again and some moisture for the ground? It has been, it just rains here now. Right? It just rains here. I'm, my phone don't even show anything anymore. But we do definitely thank God for the rain. We're so thankful that you are here today, especially in the summer. So grateful for you showing up faithfully on Sundays. And if you're here and you're new, we're so glad you are with us. It is our joy and honor to serve you. And we are going to enter into the season of growth track. So if you've been with us new here or you've been with us for a little while, haven't taken our growth track, it's the heart and the vision and everything about uh, oasis and what you can know of. And if you're looking for a, a home church, it's a great way to get plugged in to listen to the heart of the church. Amen. How many know that's a big deal? Amen. So uh, if you have your Bibles, open them up to Ephesians chapter four. We're going to go ahead and get right into the word of the Lord, a very powerful word that the Lord has given me and, uh, you know, what I've studied and, and, and uh, put down. So Ephesians chapter four, if you got it, say amen. Oh, come on, church. 1115, I know the weather is a kind of kick back, chill back, relax. But how many know you're in the house of the Lord today? And that this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Rejoice as a party word. In other words, you can get up, spin about wildly, and dance because God has given you another day. How many are thankful that you are glad to be in the house of the Lord today? That's better, y'all. That's better. Wake up. Tell your neighbor, wake up. 
You got to hear this today. Ephesians chapter 4. I, I, I would normally say, uh, you know, I, I, I'll preach faster if you say amen, but I, I ain't going to go that route because I get too excited and, and y'all, y'all just begin to stir things up. So uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26. And if you have your Bibles open, if you can, stand for the reading of God's Word. How many love His Word? Well, amen, and we're grateful for His Word because you're going to hear His Word today. And so Ephesians chapter 4, starting at verse 26. In your anger, do not sin. Welcome to church today. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Verse 27, and do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer. Stop your stealing. Okay? But must work. Do something useful with your own hands that they may have something to share with those in need. How many know it's not just about you but about others? All right. Verse 29, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. Welcome to church today. But only what is helpful for building others up whom you were sealed uh, according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. If you don't have nothing good to say, don't say it at all. Come on, somebody. Mm-mm-mm-mm. As the Bible, don't get mad at the preacher. Take it up with the Lord in verse 30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. How many don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit? I mean, no, we break enough hearts already, but we don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Verse 31. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, slander, along with every form of malice, but be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ God, and just as in Christ God forgave you. How many are thankful for his forgiveness? Come on, somebody. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15, and then we'll pray. See to it, see to it, you see to it, that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. Father, we thank you for your holy word. And Lord, I pray that, Lord, you would just come anoint my mouth, my tongue, Lord, to speak what you would have to say. Holy Spirit, you are the primary teacher. Open up the hearts, eyes, and ears to receive and hear. And Lord, all that you have for us today, Jesus reigns in this place. This is a demon-free zone. And we give you all the glory and honor and thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. amen. You may be seated. To quickly move, it has been my prayer in these last few Sundays and in the summer months that God has been given to me about breakthrough. Breakthrough causes breakthrough. And that you would be a people of breakthrough. That you would be the house of Perez. The house of Perez began with a, 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 a breakthrough when he was in the womb of his mother, Tamar. How many want your house to be a house of breakthrough? And it went from generation to generation to generation. And that so much that David was born it, it, it was born from the house of his great 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 grandfather Perez meaning break through. And he began to change his whole circumstance that when you saw David battle Goliath, when you saw David had to deal with things, he had breakthrough in his life. So much so that he went into the Valley of Giants and called it Bel Perazim, the God of breakthroughs. Come on, somebody. How many know there are many giants that we face in life, but how many thank God that we can proclaim victory already as David will proclaim? Not only is he giving me victory in this valley, but he's going to give me victory through every battle that I face because he is the Lord of breakthroughs. And I'm telling you, it's not just going to bless you, but it's going to bless your house, and it's going to bless your children and your children's children. Can I hear an amen, somebody? 
But I want to see that breakthrough in your life where it is flowing in you and out of you. And last week we talked about the breakout that, uh, that Peter experienced in prison. That God opened the gate into the city. He was in prison, but he had a breakout. And if, if God can break Peter out of prison, then I know I can have a breakout in my life from prisons that are holding me back. But in order for you to have a breakthrough, in order for you to really advance and move forward, because it's time to move forward, and some of you are stuck, and it's time to move forward, you got to know what's underneath the surface. What's beneath the surface? If we want to have a breakout, if we want to break through, I want to hit something that I believe will be a topic today that will really dig deep inside to really what lies beneath. My question to you today, church, what lies beneath? Come on, somebody. What lies are beneath that has kept so many people in the church from advancing because they can't let go of the past? Is there a root of bitterness, of unforgiveness that you can't let go. We're going to get beneath the surface that maybe what lies beneath is a five-year, 10-year, 20-year-old grudge that you have not let go. And you are not willing, you're not able to move Forward. I was inspired uh, to preach this sermon from the song uh, called Whiplash from Mercy Me's latest album. And it was a title of my sermon until we changed it to really, Lord, that's my, what God gave me is I want to get beneath the surface today. But in the title of that song, it's called Whiplash. It's an upbeat song and you could go home and on your way from church, out, out of church today, you can jam it up. It's an upbeat song. It's a cool song. But here are the lyrics to it. Why you keep looking right behind you? Keep throwing your head back and forth. Have my eyes straight ahead because ain't nothing back there anymore. Now you got a case of whiplash. Everyone go like this. Now you got a case of whiplash. Why are you keeping track of your past? You are free at last. And I'm just going to speak that over your life right now, that you are free. And you are free at last. Thank God Almighty. Come on, somebody. And when you're free, church, there ain't no need for whiplash. And when I was thinking about this and thinking about, Lord, I want to get beneath the surface so we can get to the root of what's been holding us down. And I believe a lot of it is because of a past hurt. Somebody hurt you. Somebody wounded you. Maybe a family member. Maybe a parent. Maybe a sibling. Maybe a grandparent. A friend. But that grudge is inside of you. And it's become root. It's a root of bitterness that is trying to grow up. And I began to think about it and everything that's going on in my life right now. I am in my 40s. And I found out life changes at 40. Life changes after 40. I, I uh, you know, with my mom and people have been loving and just praying for us and we're getting a lot of meals, and I said this the other day, and I look at all this good food, and, 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 and uh, uh, you know, some of this is a big tray of enchiladas, and back then, I could probably eat half of that thing. Now I say, I can't even, I can't eat like I used to. And if I even try to eat like I used to, then I got to watch out. Come on, somebody. I can't really eat like I used to. You know, now that I'm in my 40s, I'm not as fast as I used to be. But I'm going to tell you right now, I am fast in my mind. Come on, somebody. In my mind, oh, I can beat that. 
But I tell you right now, if you put me on the football field, and I've seen this, where I've come against these young ones, and they're going to try to outrun me, let me tell you something. i got to hold on to their shirt. Because if I don't hold on to their shirt and get a little somewhat advantage to keep them close to me, then they're going to run away from me, and they're going to be wide open, y'all. They are going to be wide open and get a touchdown every time. I'm not as fast as I used to be. At 40, things will hurt in the morning that didn't hurt at night. Where in the world did that come from, right? Some things change at 40. So I made a decision, especially now that 50 is in front of me. I made some decisions that I'm going to try to live my best life right here and right now. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm not going to let things get to me like I used to. I don't care if people like me or not. I'm going to enjoy life. I'm going to enjoy my family and give God thanks every day he's given me. Come on, somebody. I don't got time to play high school. I don't got time to to play all these games. I'm 40 years old. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my life. I'm not going to let things bring me to an early grave. Come on, somebody. I ain't going to get stressed about it. I'm too blessed to be stressed Woo! come on somebody now I've, I've I've found out that I can deal with a lot of personalities right now I deal with people you know as a pastor you deal with all kinds of personalities and people and so you know what you know that's fine I'm gonna pray for them I'm gonna love them they ain't gonna get to me some people have talked about me some people have yelled at me some people have loved me and cheered for me. But you know what? I'm just going to live life. I'm going to enjoy my fa- family. I'm going to enjoy my life. Come on. But you know what? I got to confess today. There is still something that gets on my last good nerves. There is still something, y'all, that gets me and it tests my Christianity. That I can deal with all kinds of things and say, you know, I'm just going to let that pass. I'm good. I got it. But when this one thing comes up, it just pushes me not only to pray for them, but to pray for myself, y'all. And that is that I, I, I come to the point where it gets on my last good nerve is that it's people who don't know how to drive. Come on, somebody. It's 30 miles per hour, y'all. Go 30 miles per hour. Put your signal light on. Come on, somebody. Am I on the only one? Oh, yeah, good, good. Come on. Can I get a witness in here? If there's one thing that pushes me and tests me in that car and I'm holding my tongue and holding my hands back and stuff like that, it is how people can drive sometimes. I'm confessing, y'all. I'm being vulnerable. Please pray for me. But I will tell you this, that not too long ago, and I've, it's happened a couple of times, maybe it's happened to you, that I've come behind someone at a red light. And I came behind someone at a red light and the light turned green. And when the light cur- turned green, the car did not move. So I waited for a few seconds, and the car didn't move. And so I kind of gently tapped the horn, and the car didn't move. And I eased my car up a little bit. And the car, it didn't what? And so the light turned from green to yellow to red. And I ain't going to tell you what happened after that. I'm just kidding. But that's happened to me a couple of times, y'all. But listen, there is nothing worse than being behind someone are connected to someone, are being someone who doesn't know when it's time to move on. The light of life has changed, and it is time for you to move forward from where you are. 
And I'm not talking about driving anymore. I'm talking about life. Some of you are still sitting still at a green light. You're stuck on what was instead of what will be. You're stuck on what was instead of what will be. God has something better, something great for your life, and you're still stuck right where you are. You can't move forward holding on to what's behind you. There's no way you're going to get ahead in life by holding on to your past. Life is filled with people who have issues and offenses and things that they're dealing with that they won't let go. And there's life filled with people sitting at green lights. God has given you the go and you ain't going nowhere. Mm -mm -mm -mm. All I know is I could see the car in front of me. I saw above the surface. I knew it was a car, but the car wasn't moving. The, the car didn't move when the light turned green. But what I did not know is I couldn't tell who or what was inside the car. I didn't know what was going on beneath the surface. What is beneath the surface that is holding you back today? Is there bitterness? Is there in unforgiveness towards somebody that hurt you or wronged you and you're holding this grudge from your past that you will not let go of? Welcome to church today. Because here's the thing I'm, why we want to dig up what lies beneath. Because who the sun sets free is free at last. And it's time for you to put your foot on the pedal and go where God has called you to be. It is bitterness that is controlling you from putting your foot on the pedal and going on with your life. It's beneath you, growing inside of you, and you begin holding anger and resentment to, towards somebody else. Leviticus 19, 18 says, you shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge. And we are people who are really good at taking vengeance and holding grudges. Come on, somebody. And you shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor and lo as yourself. I am the Lord. Who is the Lord? He's the Lord, right? He's the one talking. Who's the one talking here? And he's saying, you don't hold, you don't seek revenge. You don't hold a grudge, but love your neighbor and love yourself. And you can't even love yourself because of the grudge that has got a grip on your life. Oh, come on, somebody. This is the Lord talking to his people. Don't seek revenge and hold a grudge. How does bitterness and grudges grow? You feed it. And what you feed continues to grow. The bigger the bitterness grows, the greater the anger and resentment that burns within you and will eventually burn through you onto others, which leads to hate which leads to violence. Pastor Amber preached a powerful message on Wednesday to our youth about Joseph and his brothers. And, and the good bulk of Genesis is the story of Joseph. It's a story of family dysfunction. It's a story of, 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 of betrayal. It's a story of forgiveness. Go and read your Bible. Come on, somebody. But he had a problem. The brothers had a problem with Joseph. And it wasn't so much the dream that Joseph shared with them. Hey, one day I'm going to rule and you guys are going to bow to me. How many know that would probably tick you off? But they had already held something against Joseph. They had a grudge against Joseph because they saw that their father loved him more than them. So they even tried to kill him. And they sold him and they tried to get rid of him. Come on, somebody. That's the power of what a grudge can do that can lead to hating someone, even your own family member, and you wishing harm on somebody. Listen, listen. When you read the headlines and you see these shootings that are happening at grocery stores and churches and in and, and our schools, and you see these terrorist attacks that are going on, it's not that they just got killed by someone pulling a trigger, that some person pulled the trigger. It, they got killed by somebody holding a grudge. They got attacked. People were hurt because of a grudge. Lives were taken because of a grudge. 
It will lead to resentment. It will lead to rage. It will lead to anger. And people that weren't even connected to your, to your past or to, your, to the situation that caused that anger to rise up in you, and now you're hurting people that weren't even connected to it. That's crazy. What caused them to pull the trigger? Rage. They had uh, the root of bitterness on the inside of them. It's sad that we hurt people that weren't even connected to what made you angry. We bleed on people that didn't even cut you. I hurt. So I want them to hurt. And because of that, you carry this anger and this resentment from a grudge 10, 5, 10, 20 years ago. And guess what? People that love you and come in connection with your, your, your life, like namely your wife and your kids, they get hurt by that anger. Whether it's abuse physically or mentally, they are dealing with a wound that has not been healed in your life. And you're like, you're like, you know, when it's all said and done, come on, somebody. When, it, when, you, when you yelled and your rage was out on your kids, you're like, whoa, where did that come from? Because you have not been healed properly. You are holding a grudge. You are holding bitterness. The root of bitterness is inside of you. So what do you do? Verse 26, do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. He's saying, don't go to bed angry. Do not go to bed angry means I have let it go before I fall asleep. In other words, we're going to be angry. We're going to be upset sometimes, but deal with it. Give it to God and ask the Lord to help you deal with it on the day and the, and the issue right then and there. Do not fall asleep with the anger. Don't let, it, don't let it have you when you sleep. Because if you let it go before you fall asleep, then it won't be with you when you wake up. Come on, somebody. And if it's with you when you wake up, you didn't let it go. And the more the sun goes down on that anger, the more it begins, the root begins to get deep on the inside of you. The harder it is to get rid of. This is the Bible, y'all. This is how we do it. And we do it our way so many times. And how many times do we find out it doesn't work? He says, don't let it go down. Handle it before you even go to sleep so that day it don't carry on to your next day. And how many know his mercies are new every morning? His mercies are there for you every morning, but you can't, you can't get a, be a part of that because you're holding on to that anger. You're holding on to that bitterness. So verse 27, watch this. Look what happens. And do not give the devil a foothold. So in other words, when you're ticked off and you don't handle your anger, you're just saying, devil, come on in. That's what he's saying. I mean, how many would open your door to an intruder? You got a guy standing in your front door, knocking on your door with guns saying, I want to come kill, steal, and destroy your life. How many would open the door and invite him in? But that is exactly what happens when you let anger run your life. We wouldn't let that in. But see, if we don't care, if we don't take care of what's beneath the surface, then, then that's what we're doing. We won't let go of the anger. He says, it's like giving a mighty foothold to the devil. It's literally saying, if I'm going to keep and hold on and retain this emotion, this feeling, it's putting a big invite sign saying, devil, come on into my life. Devil, come on into my family. Come on into my home. That's what it is. Because you have not dealt with that anger. Hmm. How do you feed the root of bitterness? By continually rehearsing it, reenacting it, reliving it. You won't let it 
go. And because of it, you talk to others. Come on, somebody. Some of you probably don't even know it's there. It's beneath the surface. It's been there for so long. You've gotten so comfortable with it. But how many know you, you know you hold a grudge, y'all, when you begin to talk to others about that person you don't like? Oh, come on. How many know? Anything that involves trying to ruin that reputation, trying to hurt that person, trying to bring them down, and you're going to tell people to get people on your side, you got a grudge. You've got bitterness on the inside. Well, pastor, how do I know I got that? Well, go to lunch today. Who are you talking about? Come on, somebody. I, I know this is a tough word, but it's a Bible. Take it up with him, not me. The root doesn't die on its own. You have to kill it. And how do you kill it? Stop feeding it. Stop feeding it. And, 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 and when we talk about it, I share this first service. When we talk about it, how many know the, the psalmist says, oh, magnify the Lord? How many know when we magnify the Lord, you can't make God bigger than he already is. He's, he's, he's God. But what happens is when we give, begin to give him praise and thanksgiving and worship in our lives and our hearts, when we begin to talk about him, we magnify him bigger than any issue that is going on in our life. But when we begin to talk about our problems, talk about her, talk about him, talk about what they did, what they did, what they did, and we don't let go of the past and we, don't, and we keep reenacting, reliving, and rehashing those things, how many know you are magnifying that situation? You are making that bigger in your life and that anger, that resentment just keeps growing and you cannot go forward. You can't move forward and you hurt others. And let, let me share this with you. The, 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 uh, I was reading on, on Mike Tyson. How many know Mike Tyson? Boxers have a story in their life of why. What, what causes them to be so powerful? What causes them to, uh, to be able to win and knock out people? And here's the thing about boxers is that boxers, they train hard. They, they, they learn how to punch. They have skills. They do all these things, y'all. But when they're in the ring, there's a story behind when they go in that ring. And let me tell you what it is. It wasn't Mike Tyson's story. It's another boxer. I forgot his name. But Mike Tyson's story is when he grew up, all he knew was a mom that beat him. And he took it into the ring every single time. And all he could see was his past, and he took it out on his opponent. And, and, and there was another boxer that his dad left him and, and, and for, abandoned him, his mom, and he hated his dad. He hated his dad because his dad was never there. And he had the ability to go in the ring and knock out people viciously. I mean, they said, is it your right hand? How are you knocking out these guys? Why are you so powerful in the ring? And he says, every time I see their face, I see my dad. You can't look past of what is behind you and you want to hurt people because you can't get over it. Come on, somebody. There are boxers with stories that when they go and they make somebody, they can do damage and it's not so much the skills. It's because of their past. You got to get over it. And Mike Tyson, at 47 years old, he said, I finally had to surrender. And his statement, he said, I had to surrender to God. 47 years old. And he said, I wasted my life looking at somebody that I never, ever wanted to be. I hurt people. And I didn't hurt people the right way. I hurt them because all I can know, all I know is that my life was in defeat dysfunction I was hurt I didn't have the right mother and I took it out on everybody and I wasted so many years being somebody in front of the whole world that I knew I wasn't don't waste another minute don't waste your life from something in your past come on somebody come on Stop hurting others and get healed. Stop taking it out on others and start seeing that in your life, you, there's some things in you that need to get right. You can blame him all you want. But there's something that God wants to do in your life. 
And there's an issue that you got to handle in your own life that God wants to deal with. Don't waste another minute. Don't waste your life. We ask those questions. Why did they love them more than me? Why did he hurt me? Why did she reject me? Why was I abandoned? Why didn't I get the promotion? He did. All these whys feed the root of bitterness, causing it to grow within you. And you can't fix anything of the past. All it will do is hold you back from your future. It is a victim mentality. It's not a victim mentality. Do you know who you are? You are more than a conqueror. Everything that Jesus did on the cross is so that we can be forgiven and have a future and a hope that God has given us. And let me tell you something. You are victorious. But when we hold on to the offense, we get a victim mentality. Woe is me. And all it does, it reminds us of the past and it only empowers our past to keep us in a prison today. That's all it does. The victim mentality empowers your past to keep you in a prison today. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 50 says, See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. Bitterness is like a root. Now a root is under the surface. You don't see it. It's beneath the surface. And a bitter root causes trouble. See to it that nobody falls from grace. Isn't that should be our brothers and our sisters to care and to pray for one another and say, hey, man, you can make it. Hey, we believe in you. But if we live with bitterness, all it does is cause trouble and hurts many people, will defile others. It hurts many people. So a bitter root causes trouble, so it produces a bitter fruit. A bitter root causes and produces bitter fruit. Is that what you want for your life? We won't let it go, though. It's beneath the surface, and it grows up. It continues to grow as we feed it, hurting yourself and hurting others. So verse 31, get rid of it. Read it. What do I do with this? So the Bible says, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, anger, brawling, slander, along with every form of malice. Get rid of it. Look at your neighbor and say, get rid of it. Stop holding on to it. Stop with the whiplash. Stop hurting yourself. Stop hurting someone and realize you need to get healed. And if you can get rid of it, then God says, be kind and compassionate to one another. That's what we ought to be doing. That's what's bringing life to the body and bringing, healing one another, lifting each other up. Come on, forgiving each other just as Christ, God, in Christ, God forgave you. How many are thankful that he forgave you? Amen. He forgave you. Now watch this. Watch this about being forgiven of our sins and coming in right relationship with Jesus. Watch this. That if we have a problem holding offense and we cannot forgive our brother, God takes issue with us when we hold unforgiveness towards our brothers. And our sisters, watch this, Luke 6, 37. Do not judge, you will not be judged. Come on. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Everyone say forgiveness. Because that's such a distant word with a victim mentality. That's just, we're going to handle this our own way. We're going to hurt as many people. I'm going to bring them down. I'm going to bring them down before they bring me down anymore. No, we need to have the thought of forgiveness. Everyone say forgiveness. Give it and you'll receive it. Give it. If, I, if we do not forgive, then our Father will not forgive us. In other words, he says, call them before you call me. That's our part. That's our part. No, 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 no. You want me to deal with you on this? Call them before you call me. Reason many people have health issues and unanswered prayer is holding unforgiveness. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And here's the thing we can't live with unforgiveness in our hearts. We cannot do that in the body of Christ. Why? Because we are called to be a people who forgive others. We are called to a people who forgive others. So let it go. Stop letting it control you. Listen, holding grudges and walking around with unforgiveness, you got to explain to me. It, you got to make sense to me. How is it of value to you? How is it?
is it that being mean and upset and angry at somebody that hurts you, how is that helping you? And you have convinced yourself that unforgiveness is just for the person who hurts you, but it's really for you. Because what you're saying is, I guess my life will be stuck on pause in this one scene of the movie, and we can't even watch the whole movie because you're stuck on that one scene. You're at the light, but you ain't going nowhere. God's giving you the green light, but you're staying stuck where you are because you're holding on on that one scene, that one thing or that one word, that painful past that hurts you, and you cannot go forward, and so you hold on to it. And we're all we're doing is seeing you stuck where you are. But I believe there's some people here that are ready to move on, that are ready to let it go because you know I got more to live. I got more to do. I got a purpose. I have a destiny. So I'm not holding on to my past. I'm letting go of it and grabbing on to the future that God has for my life. Tell your neighbor, let it go. And I began to think about this. How in the world are you living in your own house and giving the thermostat to somebody else in their house? Come on, somebody. How are you going to live and try to live your life by getting someone else control over your emotions? Here you are living in your own house. It's somebody controlling your emotions, setting up the atmosphere in which you live in every day. They got the thermostat. They want you hot, they just turn it up. And anything they say, it got you all messed up for the rest of the day. They want you cold, they just turn you down. Oh, come on, somebody. I know I'm preaching today. They want you turned, they'll, they want you cold, they'll turn you down. And just one little thing will just make you, cause you not to function properly. Come on, somebody. That's too much control to give somebody. That's too much control to give somebody over your life. It's too much control to give somebody that you walk into a grocery store and you see them and all of a sudden it messes you up, ruins your whole day. It's too much control to give somebody that you have to leave your job because they're at the job. That's too much control. That's too much control when you come in the house of God and you want to lift your hands and worship the Lord. But the moment they walk in here, you can't even do that. That's too much control to give somebody over your life. What do you do? You get rid of it. You get that root in there and say, Lord, I'm done with it. I'm letting go today. I want freedom in my life. God is calling you to a new season. God is calling you to a new anointing. God has a plan and a purpose, a hope and a future for your life. Come on, somebody. And I believe there's some people here that know they're going somewhere. I know there's some people in here that God's sending you somewhere. And where God is sending you, your past cannot destroy. Where God is leading you, your mistakes cannot erase. Where God has provided for you, your yesterday cannot destroy. Let go of your past today. Let it go. Uh, I'm trying to get, don't mean to be too loud, but I got to get louder than the noise that's in your head. Pastor Andy, I'll close with this. Jesus makes it clear, y'all. In the last days, there'll be a fence. Jesus makes it clear in Luke 17. You will be offended. We will deal with offense. The word offense there means scandal on. It describes a laying of a trap that the enemy uses to keep people in captivity. We did a teaching here a few years ago that we did as a group about the bait stick. I mean, oh, the devil's a liar and a deceiver too. When the hunters would go out to get monkeys and the monkeys felt their life in danger, they would rush up into the trees where they couldn't get captured. How many know that? 
we got to go to higher level. We got to be above the noise. We got to be above the enemy. We got to go higher with the Lord in prayer. We got to go higher in our reading of his word so we can find out the instructions written for us from the Lord how to deal with the stuff that we are dealing with. You know what we do with bitterness? Bitterness, get rid of it. Don't go to sleep in your anger. Lord, I'm going to obey you. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to do it your way because our way doesn't work. It causes a lot of pain and it causes a lot of division. The monkeys would go up to the trees because that's where they were safe. But if they wanted the monkeys to come down, all they would do is put the stick on the ground and they would put some bait on it. And that bait would lure a monkey. And he would come down from the shelter. He would come down from a safe place right into the, the trap of the enemy. Do not take the bait of offense because it's set up for your captivity. And the monkey comes and he would get the stick and he would fall into the trap and the monkey would be beaten to death. How many people here today are being beaten to death because they do not let go of the offense? There was no device on the stick to hold the monkey's wrist. There was no handcuffs or some trap. The monkey was being bitten, beaten, and he was on the bait stick, and he was beaten to death, and all he had to do was let it go. He would not let go of the bait stick. Some of you will not. Let it go, and it is ruining your life. And it's on you. Jesus has done wonderful things for us, y'all. How are you going to read about the, the man Jesus who came from heaven to earth, died on a cross, nails in his hands and feet buried for you got up three days later for you to allow a grudge to control you God didn't bring you this far so you can be controlled by somebody else let it go today let it go today he bled and he died for every past sin, for every mistake you'll make. Thank God for his grace. We need to get our house in order. But you are, you are holding out. Jesus did some wonderful things, y'all. The Holy Spirit empowers us to do wonderful things. But the one thing, when it comes to offense, you're the one holding it. Don't you put it on God. And stop putting it on others. You're holding it. And it's time to let it go. Stand to your feet. It's time to let it go. You know, I could think about the cross and the wonderful thing. That God loved us so much, y'all, that he chose us. We love him because he first loved us see how awesome that is that we are even here today in his house and it's because of the cross man it's because of the cross that even on the cross it was our sin that put him there it was those that hung him there and he said law father forgive them for they know not what they and we can't even get over him or her because we haven't got healed. How many are thankful for the cross? I think we need to get to the cross today and lay these things down, man. Lay some stuff down. Lay our attitude down. 
I could go on and on right now. You got rivers of living water on the inside of you. But you can't even deliver it to a thirsty world because you are contaminated by anger. You are toxic by your bitterness and you have living water. And you could come up here and preach, but you have a 20-year-old grudge that has held you back. You're a conduit that God uses for a lost and dying world. And we can't even care for the, the, the needs of others, as Ephesians said, to build each other up, to forgive one another, because we don't let it go. I'm glad to say today that I am here because of Jesus and what he did on the cross, and I am forgiven. And I want that love of Jesus to come on me so I don't hold anything against my brother. I don't hold anything against my sister that I will handle the issue and the anger on that day and not go to sleep on my anger so I can be free. I am so grateful that I stand here forgiven. Are you forgiven today? Let's sing this song. We're about to end here in a moment. Hallelujah. I'm forgiven. Thank you, Jesus. Because you were forsaken. And I'm accepted. You were condemned. I'm alive when spirit lives within. Thank you, Jesus. Because you died. Amazing love, how can it be? You are so loved today, church. That you, my King, would die for He died me. for you. Amazing love, I know it's true. And it's my joy to honor you. Let me honor you. I'm forgiven. Say that. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. Oh, I'm accepted now. It says, talks about two people owing a debt. One owing 10,000 and owes the king 10,000. And he goes before the king, I can't pay this. I can't pay this. I can't do this. And, and the king says, well, you've been forgiven of 10,000. Go ahead. Don't worry about it. How many be like, whoa. Same guy goes out dancing on the street, happy. And there's a person that owes him a hundred. 100. He's been given, forgiven 10,000. He owes him 100. 
And he sees a man and says, don't you owe me a hundred? He says, I can't pay you right now. And he gets upset and gets the man thrown in prison and mistreats him because he didn't pay him for what he owed. And the king hears about it and gets the man back and says, did I not forgive you of 10,000? And he throws him in to the te tormentors. How many people are living with torment because they won't let it go? Today, freedom is in the house. But you are holding on to it and it's time for you to let go. And because it doesn't get, because you're at the green light and you can't move forward. We're going to make a step of faith today and we're going to step out today. If you are holding a fence, if you're holding a grudge, if you're holding something that's been deep down underneath and it's been digging out and it's been dealing, some of you didn't even know it was still there, but it's, it's been digging out in this service today. I want you to take a step right now. Come forward right now. Come on. There's freedom. There's freedom. telling you come on there's no judgment here there's, this is about freedom it's about freedom I check my own heart y'all I check my own heart I say God if there be any grudge in me Lord forgive me I don't want to be held by this anymore I don't want to be held by this anymore there's freedom and just like David was born in the house of breakthrough your house will be a house of breakthrough your house will be a house of breakthrough. That's what we're doing. We're breaking out of this prison, and we are getting out of here, and God is opening the door in, that leads into the city, and we are going to go where God has called us to be and be what God has called us to be. No grudge ain't going to keep us down, and we are not going to allow the devil to have a foothold in our lives, in our house, over our children. No more. The devil is defeated today devil is defeated today. You took a step saying, I am no longer being held by my past. I am letting go. I'm putting my foot on the pedal and I'm starting to go. God, you've given me the green light. I want freedom. So right now, receive this. Right now. Together. Lift up your hands. Whatever offense it is, ask the Lord to show you and to show you how to handle it. And here's the thing, it may be to go talk to the person and let them go and forgive. And it, however they receive it is up to them. But I'm telling you right now, it will be freedom for you. It will set you free. Get ready for fresh air. Get ready for peace in your home, y'all. You are moving forward today. Hallelujah. You're forgiven. You're forgiven. So that's what you do. That's what you do. That's what you do right now. Pray, Lord, what offense do I have in me that is in me? I want to get beneath the surface, and I want to get rid of it. Say right now, Lord, I get rid of all bitterness, anger, rage, uh, malice, slander that is in me. Lord, give me compassionate heart. Lord, give me a forgiving heart, Jesus. Right now, I let go of the past and I am moving forward in the things that you have for my life. In Jesus' name. So receive this right now before we go. Before we go. I pray healing over you right now. The wound has not been, you've been bleeding. Some of you have been bleeding for years. And it's almost got you. You almost bled out. But I'm telling you right now, the Lord is healing you. Receive that right now. I speak healing over your heart. Every, he is near the brokenhearted. And so, Lord, right now, every wound of the past, every hurtful uh, spoken thing, Lord, maybe it be a parent, a grandparent, a sibling, uh, uh, somebody that wounded them. Lord, I thank you right now. You are healing up the wound, God. In the name of Jesus right now, be healed. Be healed over every curse of your over your life, over every spoken word that just just destroyed your life. I thank you right now. You are restoring right now in the name of Jesus. You are restoring them right now in the name of Jesus. And their house will be a house of breakthrough. 
And Lord, that blessing will flow upon them, upon their children and their children's children. In the name of Jesus, you are free. I declare to you right now that you are free. No more whiplash. No more hurting you. No more hurting your, your spouse. No more hurting your children. No more hurting your friends. Come on. No more whiplash in your life. You are free at last. Who the Son says free is free indeed. And Lord, I speak freedom right now in the name of Jesus, right now. The anointing to remove every burden and destroy every yoke off of their life right now. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let it go. We're letting it go today. Some of you should have been up here today. I pray right now that the Holy Spirit will, will deal with your heart and that you can let it go. Come on, somebody. You got to let it go so you can be free. You can be free and not held back right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Come on, let's give him praise for the victory. Let's give him praise for the victory. Thank you, Lord. One last thing. One last thing, y'all. You've been looking so much in the rearview mirror. You're about to look into your car right now at this big windshield and see all that's in front of you. And if you need to go to Albertsons, you're going to get there. <laughs> if you need to go to Walmart, you're going to get there. But I'm just here to tell you that Forgiveness doesn't change your past, but it enlarges your future. There's, your future is bright. Your future is bright. Come on, can we give God praise right now? We love you, Oasis. God bless you. Be free in the name of Jesus. We love you.